is that not? But how is that not breaking sanctions here imposed on mm -hmm. Russia? Well, it technically, arguably, is is breaking sanctions because of a relationship that this account has through Gazprom with the central bank. A highly, basically, the 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 foreign currency is collateralized with the mm -hmm. central bank to get the rubles. And that's where the breach of sanctions takes place. Remember, these countries are all buying oil and gas at the moment, and that's legitimate and that's not sanctioned. So right. what has happened is it's this work, this weirdness that Putin has put in to force them to use rubles. And it's political as much as anything else, Allah. It's political. <laughs> And, and this is what Poland and Bulgaria have said they're not willing to do. This is why Russia then cut off exports to those countries. We think that po probably po Poland and Bulgaria, A, hadn't worked out the way round it, B, weren't prepared to go forward with it, uh, whatever, and C, have got greater domestic supplies that they could afford yeah. to wait it out. But Germany, for example, is going ahead in something like this. Hungary is going ahead in something like this, too. All right, Richard Quest. Just thank a you second. Very much. Just whoop, whoop. before you go, literally and figuratively, I, I can't believe it. I mean, you were the first person I anchored with when I joined CNN years ago, <laughs> and we anchored together in uh, well, in 2016, oh the longest broadcast <laughs> that either of us have ever done when yeah. well, on the Brexit. We also anchored on uh, um, World Business Today. We also anchored on CNN Today. You have been my TV co-host. Hello, where are you? You over there? I'm here. Many times over many years, and I'm so going to miss you. Absolutely. You know, going I'm to going miss to miss you. you as well. One story I always tell is when I first started out, I was significantly more junior than you. And we were co-anchoring, and you were always so generous to me, oh. Richard. And I remember very, very fondly, and sometimes co-anchors are competitive. Who gets the bigger guest? Oh. Who gets the most important guest? But something about how you treated me touched me and continues to touch me to this day, where you allowed me to be your you. equal at the very beginning you when you were significantly, now yes, but at the time when I was a junior anchor and it was my first real important show and it was Thank my you. first branded show, you allowed me to shine and you allowed me to become the anchor ultimately that I became uh, down the line. And, and a lot of it is due to you. You're an extremely generous person oh, and a fantastic broadcaster. Well, so thank you so the much. Viewer, the dear viewer should only know how wickedly funny, <laughs> brutally funny, you are yeah. when the little red light goes off. Well, it shall remain <laughs> <laughs> under wraps for now. We'll see. Maybe one day it will come out. God speed. Thank you, God Richard bless. Quest. I'll continue to watch you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, back to our story. U.S. President Joe Biden is asking Congress to pass a new $33 billion aid package for Ukraine. This is a big deal, a huge, huge amount of money as the war enters a new phase. It would be a massive jump in funding. It's more than twice the amount Congress approved last month. Mr. Biden also outlined a proposal that would put even more pressure on Russian oligarchs to help fund Ukraine's defense. Listen. The cost of this fight uh, it's not cheap, but caving to aggression is going to be more costly if we allow it to happen. We either back Ukrainian people as they defend their country, or we stand by as the Russians continue their atrocities and aggression in Ukraine. Every day, every day, the Ukrainians pay for the price, with the, and the price they pay is with their lives for this fight. So we need to contribute arms, funding, ammunition and the economic support to make their courage and sacrifice have purpose. And let's go to Chief White House Correspondent Caitlin Collins in Washington, D.C.